Hey coders and welcome to episode 4 of the HTML service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about client server interaction. So oftentimes when you're building a web app you, using HTML service you'll want to record some of the data that the user inputs from the client side and then transfer that over to the server side. So for instance if a user types in a name and an email address and you want to store that data in a Google Sheet, you'll want that data to go from the client side code to the server side so that you can use something like spreadsheet app uh, to store that in a spreadsheet. Um, also say if, if, if you have a calendar app and they and put a date and you want to create an event, you'll need server side logic to do that. So one way to do this, again, we looked at this in the last episode, is to use scriptlets. And again, those will run your server-side code for you. However, those are only meant to be somewhat of a one-liner solution. And if you have more elaborate server-side code that you want to run, it really doesn't work as well as this method, which I'm about to showcase today. And that is google.script.run. And if you put this method into your uh, client-side code, you'll be able to run any of the functions from your server side. So uh, this isn't technically a HTML service method. However, it's often used to complement any app that you produce through the HTML service. So I've included it in this playlist so that we can review it here. So the top three methods that we're going to look in this video are google.script.run, with success handler, and with failure handler. So let's dive into the code and see what these three methods can do for you. I've gone ahead and pre-written a lot of the code just for the sake of time, and I'll be trying to explain a lot of it, a lot of the more pertinent aspects of it as we go. However, if it seems unclear at times or confusing, feel free to hit the pause button or replace some sections or just post your questions in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer them. So anyways, let's dive in. We have our server-side code right here and you can tell that it's server-side because it has the file extension .gs, that is app script way of saying, yep, this is server-side code. The, the client-side code or the front-end code has the file extension .html as uh, usual. So anyways, let me now show you the interface for the web app that we have created. It's right here. This is the design that I just put together real quick. And basically, this is the intention of the app. We are going to type in a message, and then we're going to type in a recipient email. And basically, we're going to take the message that we type in English, and we're going to translate it into Pig Latin. And then we're going to send that translated message to the recipient email address after we click this button right here. So let's dive back into the code. Again, here is our server side, but let's jump into the client side now. So again, here is the HTML document. Uh, I'm not gonna go line by line, obviously, because this is not a HTML uh, tutorial. This is uh, just an HTML service playlist. But um, anyways, let's just look at some of the more pertinent aspects. So this is the script right here. So this is our client side JavaScript. I've decided to include it within the this this file just because it's pretty small already and it is nice once in a while just to have everything in one place that you can look at and then also here is my CSS um, again I'm not gonna go over any of this but if you were curious to see how the CSS was stylized here it is right here feel free to pause it at any time all right back into the HTML so basically again what we're gonna do is we're going to get the email address and the message in English and then we're going to translate it using this function right here this client side function pig Latin and then it's going to return now the pig Latin message uh, so here we go we're going to call that function we're going to pass in the argument of our English message this function right here is going to return for us the pig Latin message and now we have stored that message in a constant called pig Latin message so now we have the pig Latin message and what are we going to do with it? Well, we'd like to send an email using this as the email body, right? But how are we going to do that? Well, we have logic already written out in our server side. Uh, it's called send pig Latin email. And on line 14 right here, you can see that we are utilizing the Gmail service with the Gmail app. And then we are using the method from that class 
called send email. We're taking the recipient and then we are uh, also taking in a body and then we are sending the email with those two arguments. All right, so well, how are we going to communicate this code with this code right here? Well, it would be very simple if we could just say, all right, um, so the name of the function is send pig Latin email, let me just call it, right? But that is not going to work because now if we just say send pig Latin email, once this code right here, this front end code runs, it's going to be trying to search for a function that is named sync or that is named send pig Latin email within the client side code. And as you can see, we have no function named send pig Latin email defined or declared within our client side JavaScript. So it's just going to error out. What we want is we want to tell this file, we want to tell this JavaScript to say, hey, don't look within the client side, look within the server side for a function named send pig Latin email. And the way to do that with app script is to prepend this uh, function right here with google.script.run. And when you say google.script.run dot whatever function you're trying to run, then basically what that is telling app script is, hey, look within the, uh, the the server side code, so any any of the files that have a .j or .gs extension, and then search for this function name right here and run it. So it's going to be google.script.run and then send pig Latin email. And it's going to look in here, it's going to find that function, and it's going to run this server side function. So it's as simple as that, it's just one line of code, and it's basically telling app script to don't look within the client side code, but look within the server side code and run send pig Latin email, the function called send pig Latin email. All right, so let's see what this function requires. So it requires two parameters. One is the recipient and one is the body. So let's just pass that in. We'll say uh, here's the recipient. It's going to be stored in a variable called email address. And then the body is going to be right here. It's gonna be called pig Latin message. All right, so it, again, it's as simple as that. We'll hit save and we'll hit uh, refresh now on this web application. And let's just see if this runs successfully. So we'll say uh, davidweiss7 at gmail.com. We'll just send it to ourselves, And then we'll type in a very nice message. We'll say, hello, my name is David and I'd like to be your friend. Alrighty, so now we have our message, we have our email recipient. Let's hit this button, translate and send email. All right, so we just hit the button and if we did everything correctly, we should find an email in our inbox. And indeed we do, here it is right here. And as we can see, it is in perfect pig Latin. It says, hello, hey, my a, omne, is way, avid day. And I'm not too fluent in pig Latin, but it surely does look like pig Latin to me. So that is again pretty pretty cool because we have just uh, connected our, ser or our, our client side code to our server side code. So that again is pretty cool but there is a little bit more there, is, there are more things that we can do um, and actually before I continue I just want to point out one thing before you can actually make this work uh, you will have to uh, run this function from the server side, uh, from this text editor, we'll have to say uh, send pig uh, an email, and then you'll have to click this run button just because you'll need to authenticate this Gmail app uh, to access your application. Um, so that is one thing you'll need to do first, but after you've done that, then you can, again, you can access this uh, from the client side. All right, so anyways, there are more, there's more functionality that you can uh, use with this google.script.run, you can also include callbacks. So callbacks are basically um, after this function has run, what do you want to do after that? And uh, if, you're, if you come from a Node.js background, um, basically you have, you have the callbacks dot then dot catch. There are similar callbacks within uh, app script and they are with success handler and the second callback or the second method is with failure handler. So basically what this is saying, and by the way, you have to include these two methods in between this dot run 
and dot whatever function you're trying to fire you can't you can't put these after this you have to include it in between dot run and dot uh, dot whatever function you're trying to run from the server side. So anyways back to these methods these are basically callbacks basically it's going to say after this function fires if it's successful or if it's successful then now we want to run another function so we'll just type in display success and as you can see this function is defined right here it says display success so basically after this function after this server side function has run then then fire this function right here display success and then if it has failed so if there's been an error somewhere then fire this function display failure so this can be uh, especially um, helpful say that say if you have a function and it uh, does its logic in the server side and then it returns some additional data then now that will return back through this function right here display success at success and it will be captured in this uh, parameter position right here. So it will be accepted on this argument. And then now you have access to whatever data that was returned from the server through this variable name right here. And as you can see, I'm using it in this message right here. All right, similarly with the failure handler, if, if this function errors out somehow, uh, let's say it can't find certain data or there's something that is just... Um, malformed or something like that then it will then it will fire this function right here display failure uh, from the client side and it will just display an error all right so I think if we run it from the application in action it will make a little bit more sense so let me type in again my email address I'll say david the y7 at gmail.com and then I'll type in a message I'll say hi my name is David. It's going to be the same one. Hi, my name is David, and I'd like to be your friend. All right, so now if we hit translate and send email, and we wait a bit, then now we have this very helpful prompt that has been returned to us. It says, congrats, your message has been sent. Here is its ID, and here is the ID of the, of the message that has just been sent, and that was calculated, or that was formed through the through the server side so again I think that is pretty flipping cool first we we communicated from our client side to the server side and then after that after this ran successfully it returned some data it returned the ID of the message that was just sent and and then we communicated that data back from the server side back from our servers to the client side and then that was successfully displayed on the interface all within less than a second so again, that is pretty helpful. Um, another way you could use this, and one way that I do it a lot at my own work, is that if I have data, say, stored in a Google Sheet, I will say run a certain uh, run a certain function. Say, like, if you wanted to query a certain uh, Google Sheet, you could run that function. You could use the spreadsheet app. You could get the data and then return whatever data was in that Google Sheet database and return it back on the application just like we're doing right here. So that is another way to do it, um, but I just wanted to use this Gmail one uh, just for fun. All right, let's just check our inbox just to be 100% sure, and it does look like we did get this email. It says, I hate my A, Omne is way avid day, and it continues in on perfect pig Latin. All right, so before we end this video, let's just showcase again this failure handler, this failure handler callback. And uh, let's just, uh, to trigger the failure, let's just type in an email that doesn't exist, uh, David. And then we'll just type some garbage right here. And then if we hit translate and send email, then now we have our error that is displayed. It says error, uh, script error, exception, invalid email, David. Which makes perfect sense because, again, David is not an email address. Um, so it could not, once it received that email address and sent it to the server for further processing, um, it accepted it through this argument through this variable called recipient and then this could not uh, fire because or this could not complete the send email method because uh, David as a recipient is not a proper email address so then it aired out and then this with failure handler callback was fired it fired this new function display failure uh, it accepted the the whatever was returned uh, which was the error 
and then it displayed that onto our document. All right, guys, so that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I know that was a lot of information, and there's a lot of code written uh, through the CSS and through the index um, and even through the, through the server side. But again, if you need to pause it or replay it, do that. Totally take some time with this because this is a very powerful method, and, and I use it a lot in my work, actually, uh, when I'm building web apps. But if you did like this and you learned something from it, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. If you have any further suggestions for future content, uh, anything that you'd like to see, just put that in the comments below and I'll enjoy reading that and, and then make those videos. Um, otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the very next episode.